Histograms are one of the most important image processing tools. We can think of them as a means of sorting or classifying information. To illustrate this, let's simplify this color bar so that it shows just 10 distinct colors. Let's imagine that we have a set of colored boxes and we want to sort them by color. Since the colors don't exactly match those on the color bar, we need to place each box on the segment that's the closest match. We've put the first box on the left on top of the pink segment. And this one will go on the green. As we sort the boxes, they start to pile up on top of their matching spots on the color bar. When we get to this blue box, we have to put it on top of one that we've already sorted because both are similar in color to the one at the bottom. In this way, we're gradually constructing the histogram of our set of boxes. The finished histogram provides us with information about the set. In this case, the histogram reveals that while there is some color variation, bluish tones are the most dominant. If all of the boxes were very similar colors, the histogram would just be a single pile. Conversely, if there were no dominant color, we'd see a uniform distribution of boxes along the color bar. Now, let's imagine that each box represents a pixel. But instead of just having 14 pixels, we have thousands or millions. In the case of this 90 by 90 pixel image, the resulting histogram will have 8,100 data points. As we've just seen, we could classify all those pixels by color, but histograms are generally calculated based on light intensity values. This means that in color images, we don't just get one histogram, but three, one for each primary color channel. To classify pixels by brightness, we divide the range of intensities from black to white into segments. Then we classify the pixels by their numerical value. The number of segments determines the histogram resolution and causes the pixel values to be redistributed. For example, if we classify the more than 8,000 pixels from the previous image in a histogram with a resolution of 6 bits, we get these three curves, one for each primary color. The points along the curves are the equivalents of the piles of boxes connected together to make a graph. As there are only 64 brightness intervals, we can see the individual points. But as we increase the resolution, histograms begin to show increasingly smaller structures in their curves. Histograms are valuable sources of information. For example, the width of the peak can tell us about the noise level of an image. When the noise level is lower, the pixel values tend to be more similar, so the peak is narrower. Histograms also tell us about the lightness of an image. If we select the area around the nucleus of the Orion Nebula, we can see that the pixel values are clustered on the right. This indicates that the image lightness is very high. But if we look at the darker areas to the left of the nebula, the histograms show a greater concentration of values in the darker range. Histograms can also tell us what the dominant color is in a color image. In this area, the red channel peak is to the right of the others, indicating a higher lightness in that channel. This suggests that reddish tones are dominant. In the upper part of the image, the green channel peak is to the left, indicating that reds and blues are dominant. The histograms of astronomical images typically have a pronounced peak near the black end of the spectrum. This indicates that linear astronomical images are predominantly black. They generally contain very few pixels with significant light levels, so we always need to delinearize. When we delinearize an image, we redistribute its brightness ratios to create a level of contrast perceptible to the human eye. This is usually done with what's called a mid-tones transfer function, which shifts the midpoint between white and black to a different pixel value. In the case of astronomical images, we move the mid-tones to the darkest area of the image. This increases the brightness, making the darkest areas visible. 
We can also use the histogram to adjust where black and white are positioned within the numerical range. But we need to do this very carefully as all the pixels with values outside the chosen range will be converted to either 0 or 1. In other words, they will be forced to either pure black or pure white. This can sometimes have a very negative effect on the image. With this function, we could easily completely saturate the brightest areas of the galaxy. We could also turn a star into a colorless flat disk. Or we could convert a dark nebula into a black mass with no information inside it. When setting the white and black points, we must therefore always ask ourselves whether clipping the histogram at its extremes will result in the loss of meaningful image information.